Remember the slow swishing. Slow swishing. Slow swishing. Oh, hang on. Not very good at giving these out. I don't. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, hang on. Boom. Boom. Atticus? Eleanor? Amanda? Diane? Nora, there you go. And here for Felix and Jesse and Felix. We're good. All right, great. Welcome. Yes, okay. Um, you ready? Um, and what we'd like you to do is after the first refrain, if you could join us in the refrain. Does that sound good? Okay. They have worked, remember, loud, proud, smiles, joyful. Thank you, Dennis. Here, here we go. Great job, everybody. All right, so Brent, if you could put your wands carefully over on the stands. Brendan, if you could help organize that, that'd be great. Oh, thank you very much. Can you organize the wands? Thanks. Okay, that seems good. Okay. Good morning. Um, so while we do some wand organization, I just wanted to say good morning to everybody. Um, today is the day God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a fabulous day to celebrate uh, children and youth and First Church and Jenny Hunt <laughs> and Rose Berman, who are here with us too. This is just beautiful. Um, my name is Sam McFerrin. If you are here for the first time, I have the, the great privilege of being the associate minister here and today is one of my favorite days as we celebrate our children and youth and a terrific uh, academic calendar year of, of faith formation. Um, as we look back to this terrific year, uh, we're grateful for vibrant Sunday school, service opportunities like Tommy's Pantry, the extraordinary youth trip to, uh, to Eastern Kentucky, um, children and youth participating in church as, as liturgists, as musicians, um, as scripture readers, the Easter egg hunt, the incredible Our Whole Lives class, um, a robust and active and fun nursery, and of course,
Um, now I invite you all to return to your seats, except for my dear friend MJ. And I'm going to invite MJ's mom to come join us. If you are a dreamer, come in. If you are a dreamer, a wisher, a believer, a hoper, a prayer, a fantasy achiever, come in, come in, come in. If you have visions of how things should be, come sit by the fire. Let us share what a world this can be, where all can be free, every you and every me. Thank you, MJ. And now let us all rise and share the peace and fellowship of Christ with one another. Peace. Peace, everybody. Happy Sunday. Peace, everyone. Happy Pentecost. Mm -hmm. We must be turned off. Peace. There we go. Mm -hmm. Peace. Peace. Good morning from Rockport, Massachusetts. Cool. Where it's cold and rainy. <laughs> yeah, not a great day up here. Except it's great because we're with you. <laughs> Oh, Susan Sodak's in the Oh, pod. you're on the road. That's very impressive technology, Ms. Sodak. We can't hear you, but we're seeing you. <laughs> oh. Church on the road. <laughs> Keep your eyes on the road, Susan. <laughs> what a treat. What a treat. Thank you. Thank you. I, you're getting hugged, too. You're not going anywhere. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for being here. Um, does Sam know he's Mike? <laughs> yes, look, we're all going to be on, we're all muted. Yeah. Right? We're in the car. In Boston. <laughs> where, where are you, Susan? <laughs> Where's Jean Good? Jean Good? Uh, we're in Boston oh. on the way to a crew meeting. We're in Boston. Uh, I, I have a grand, I have a granddaughter who's a oh, coxswain, well. and these are regional competition where time. where are they uh Cro in, in lowell lowell massachusetts oh my gosh so susan we're in massachusetts too and it's a horrible day lowell. yeah <laughs> it's delicious scrumptious chocolate lime cherry coffee pumpkin fudge banana caramel cream and and bozzy berry rocky road and toasted almond butterscotch vanilla dip butter brickle apple ripple coconut coconut uh, mocha chip Brandy, peach, and lemon custard. Each scoop lovely, smooth, and round. Tallest ice cream cone in town. Lying there, sniff on the ground. Just like ice cream, we come in different flavor. We all have taste, all beloved and fully great. Thank you, Simon. Amen. Thank, Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. And now I'm going to invite. Ryan and Beatrice and Greta to come and share the story. And we have three mics. Here's one for you. Um, one for you. And one for you. Okay. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Whoosh! And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And they all began to understand one another in new ways. For together in that space, we had the sports fanatics, and the book lovers, the gamers, and the dancers, the fixers, and the musicians. 
the people and the homebodies, the adventurers and those who like the same food, the daydreamers, the scientists, the poets, and the statisticians. As the Spirit laid upon each one of them, they began to see and understand one another differently. Amazed and astonished, they started to say things like, I never took time to watch Susie dance, and she's amazing. <laughs> or did My you see Teddy's pro science project? Wow. My goodness, I'm so grateful for Angel. She's such, she's such a good listener. Or Milky's ability to always make others feel good about themselves. Or even though I love sports, I also love the art. For you see, they had been given God's Holy Spirit, an awesome power that recognized the many blessings and gifts God had given each of them and one another. What, what a spirit! spirit. Um, Amen! <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um, oh, thanks for dropping. That's fine. Um, the gifts of God come in all our children, all their different gifts, and we celebrate them, and we thank all our readers today. Um, so thank you very much. Um, So over the last few weeks, as we prepared for this service, we've talked to the children about the meaning of Pentecost, how Pentecost in Greek means 50 days, for it's 50 days after Easter, if you include Easter Sunday as day one, and that season is often called Eastertide and marks a time where, where after Jesus' resurrection, he, he appears among his disciples, reminding them of Jesus' love and what he's called them to do. Whether it was in the upper room where Jesus appeared to the disciples and Thomas, who needed that extra, extra uh, proof of touching Jesus' hand to truly believe that it was him, or it was the, the struggling fishermen on their boat until they saw Jesus on the beach, or the travelers on the road to Emmaus who were so distraught about the news of Jesus' death that it was not until a traveler greeted them, listened to them at their point of need, had a meal with him, that their eyes were open and they saw it was him, Jesus. So today in Pentecost, after Ascension Day, Jesus has left earth to be home with God. And now God gives us the Holy Spirit in a really dramatic fashion. Lots of people in the same room, a violent wind filled the room, fire placed on people's tongues. And before you knew it, these people from different backgrounds with different gifts, as the children showed, began to understand one another, began to appreciate each other in new ways, in only ways that the Spirit can provide. And I love how the Spirit can transform a normal activity into a spiritual moment where transformation is possible. And often it is that during the time when we least expect it. I'm going to bring up three ways that the Holy Spirit is a gift. Two just briefly, and then I'm going to kind of lean into to the third. Um, and I'm speaking mainly to, to the children and youth here, because uh, this service is really about you all. But I think it's hopefully it's going to be helpful to all of us through God's grace. The Holy Spirit is a gift that comforts and assures us especially during times when we feel frustrated about things that are out of our control that we don't like, or maybe when we're sad and we're worried about someone who is unwell or sick or going through a hard time, or maybe disappointed when there was something we really, really cared about and really, really wanted and it did not happen. As comforter, the Spirit tells us that God's presence is always with us and that with that Spirit, we will get through these hard times. Maybe we need to get through by showing strength. Maybe we need to return to a quiet, calm place. But God is always with us. Secondly, the, the Holy Spirit is a gift that can teach us new things about ourselves, 
Um, I see this primarily on our, our youth service trips. I've been so fortunate in my time here to, to go to Richmond and, and Baltimore twice, Appalachia three times, the Cheyenne River Reservation in South Dakota, and this year we head to Montgomery, Alabama. And each of these trips have been new experiences. We meet new people, and we open our hearts to these experiences. And through that comes transformation. We broaden who our neighbor is. Our love expands. We learn new things about ourselves. I remember youth saying, I wasn't sure I needed to know I, needed, I could hike seven miles or use power tools or sleep on a nursery floor or, oh my goodness, I, was, I didn't realize how close I'd become to my, my fellow, uh, fellow travelers on this trip. It's just a gift to see how the spirit transforms the youth and bringing them closer to one another, expanding their sense of neighbor, and showing them that they can do difficult things. With God's grace. Finally, I'd like to spend most of my time in how the spirit can surprise and remind us about what God truly cares about and how God truly wants us to be. For some of the younger people here, they, 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 they know of Spider-Man and the multiverse. Um, I think there's something about that in kind of the, the ways that we understand time. In, uh, in seminary, they don't use multiverse language. They talk about chronos time, which is the chronological time that we deal with. And then we talk about kairos time, the right time, when things kind of interrupt our lives, the stars align, and whether we needed it or didn't know we needed it, something happened that created some, a transformative moment in our lives. It's often very magical, and as my ethics professor, Katie Cannon, would tell me, it's when the yeses line up and you gotta go through that door, even if you're scared. So let us begin with talking about Kronos time for kids. Um, these last four years have been really hard. Um, if we look back four years from now, when we were still uh, immersed in, in dealing with COVID, um, many of them, many of you were are home uh, doing virtual school, away from your friends, away from these social connections, which really nurture the spirit, especially for young people. Um, wasn't the same to be you know, away from your teachers that way. Um, so kind of working through that, especially during a time when children really lean on social connections for identity, for a sense of community, for a sense of belonging, um, to emerge out of that uh, is challenging. Um, the children also have a challenge. This is a new time that they're dealing with. You know, we have computers in our pockets with 24-hour news that is not nuanced or does not need context. And there are some upsetting ideas out there about climate change, about division in the world. And it's hard for all of us, but sometimes for children to kind of find where our place is in this and to know that God is calling us in the midst of it. In his book, Scaffold Parenting, which might be a great summer read, uh, Dr. Harry Koplowitz, he's the founder of the Child Mind Institute, describes how all these challenges coming together, kids feeling isolated. If you look at the data, there's been a significant statistical increase in emergency room visits, sought out therapists, and even reports of self-harm among kids. And this should cause a fire alarm among all of us and how we care for our children and how we think about our future. And he shared some solutions. And of course, the solutions are how we can be better models as adults, how we can look for those resources with, um, to, to help and support, whether it's being models and how we manage our own um, screen presence or whether we can seek out communities and resources and, and, and people to create those connections and sources of belonging for our children and youth. So even in the midst of just the normal day, the children are experiencing a lot. And then 
our children, who I all adore, you all lead pretty busy lives, right? School's really busy, drama's busy, music appointments, dance, um, church, Girl Scout experiences, time with family and friends, it's a really busy life. And you all work really hard to honor all those moments and do your very best. And that can sometimes be really tiring. And you're listening to lots of voices about what it means to honor all those. And sometimes when you hear all those voices, it's hard to kind of think about where is that inner voice inside me? And that's why, it's remember, that's why it's important to remember that God is always speaking to us. And sometimes God interrupts our normal day and creates these moments where God reminds us of who we are and what's most important. And I have a story to share with you. And not surprisingly, it's about baseball. <laughs> As many of you know, I've been part of my community's little league for 10 years. I've learned how to coach, I've loved supporting my boys, and I've gotten involved in different ways to help support the league, to make it nicer and more welcoming. So this year, I was part of a team that created a challenger division for our league. Now, challenger division, it's a sanctioned league by Little League that teaches the love of baseball for boys and girls that experience the world differently than we do. Maybe they have a harder time physically moving or maybe their mind works a bit differently in how they understand the world. And because I love baseball, I love the idea of making baseball available to everyone, but especially to girls and boys who maybe might not have thought that there was space for them. So we created this challenge of division. We did some outreach to the community. We found a coach, and we put three clinics on the calendar. And two Saturdays ago was the first clinic in the history of the league, and I got to be a part of it. And so did baseball players from the majors division. So those are fourth to sixth graders. Um, and these majors players got to be buddies for the challenger athletes, okay? So, um, and buddies would support the challenger athletes and help co Coach Tom lead an active, fun, and successful clinic. So at that first clinic, we had two challenger athletes, a fourth grade boy, who we will call Devin, and a kindergartner girl, who we will call Alice. And we had nine buddies. And the buddies arrived at 8.30 to work with Coach Tom and figure out what the plan was before the challenger athletes arrived at nine. And once they learned that there were only two athletes, some of the buddies said, what are we going to do for 90 minutes when they're just two athletes? Is this going to be fun? Am I sure I should have signed up for this? So they brought all these expectations that were based upon their own experience in Little League, the chronos time expectations. And Coach Tom would gather them together for 30 minutes, and he thanked them for being there. He said the main goal is to be safe and supportive, and he began to assign them roles. Two would be peers to Alice, two would be peers to Devin, five would help run specific baseball activities, everyone would cheer. The buddies still kind of understood, but were still nervous. So then at nine o'clock, Alice and Devin arrive with their dads. Boom. Without being asked, the nine buddy, buddies gather quickly around them like they are the MVPs. They welcome them, they ask questions about their love of their baseball, their favorite activities at school. They become so genuine in wanting Alice and, and Devin to feel a sense of belonging. And before you know it, Alice and Devin are running around the bases, picking up and throwing baseballs, hitting them off the tee. And even when the throw might not go far or in the right direction, or even when the, the challenger athlete might not run the bases in the right order, the cheering and supporting is contagious. And through this, God is introducing to the buddies a sense of joy about what it means to be in community and love with new friends. During this time, a fellow coach had brought a big speaker. Um, and with Bluetooth, you can play all the, all the music. So we were playing the great 
rock song, baseball rock songs from the 80s and 90s. Put me in, coach, journey, all these great songs. And, and, and the kindergarten, and it occurred to me, I said, you know, these are great songs. And, and, and the buddies are really into it, and, 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 and I'm really into it. But I'm concerned that Alice, the kindergarten girl, might not be so into it. So maybe let's go ask Alice what song she would like. And, and I've heard recently lots of great things about Beyonce, and I've heard a lot of great things about Taylor Swift. And, and so as I, I came to Alice, I said, Alice, I am so grateful you're here. You're having such a wonderful time. I am Coach Sam, and, and we want to play some music that you like. And she looked at me with a confidence beyond her years. And she said, I'm so glad you asked me. I would love for us to sing my favorite song. C is for cookie. <laughs> so before you knew it, C for, is for cookie was, was in, in, in Apple Music, it was on the speakers, and we were all saying, C is for cookie, it's good enough for me. Come on, y'all. C is for cookie, it's good enough for me. C is for cookie, it's good enough for me. Oh, cookie, 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 start with C. Beautiful, beautiful. So it was such a wonderful, wonderful moment, and it brought delight to everyone there. And just like that room where the spirit, the wind would fill everything, the spirit filled everything on that baseball field, the spirit was filled. And it is my hope and prayer that for everyone here, that we go into communities and experiences with open hearts where the spirit can come in and truly, truly transform us. Amen. OK, all right, we are rock and roll in here. Um, I'm going to invite the choir, the youth choir, to come up. And, um, and, and if you are not in the youth choir, and then about a minute or two, you might be invited to stand up. So I just want to prepare you for that moment, um, because this is going to be really soulful and fun. Um, we, we feel in the soul? We feel in the spirit? Um, we need you. We need you. All right. You ready? All right. So we're, we're going to do this twice. And the second time, you're going to help us out, okay? okay. All right.
Good morning, First Church. It is such a joy to be with you on this Pentecost Sunday as we are led by our children and youth. And every time I have the opportunity to be up here and to invite you to give generously of your tithes and offerings to support the ministries of this church and the mission to which we are called here, I like to lift up one of our ministries that is just doing incredible work in the life of our church and in the life of our city. And I wonder if you can guess which ministry I want to lift up this morning. This morning, I am just so delighted to lift up our children and youth ministry and the person who makes it all possible, which is the Reverend Sam McFerrin. Now, if you know anything about Reverend Sam, you know he is always giving the credit to other people. He will say, no, it is the children and the that they do we are so very grateful so if you believe in what we are doing here today if you are moved by seeing so many children come up and share their gifts tremendous gifts we've heard today uh, gifts from Beatrice on the violin uh, we always appreciate Ryan McFerrin's gift of theater the musical gifts that we've experienced yep he knows it too so many gifts, gifts of poetry by MJ and Simon and soon by Wallace. We are so grateful for all these gifts. So if you want to ensure that we can continue to make this happen at First Church, we covet your support. The easiest way to give, if you are here in the sanctuary, there's an offering plate and a QR code on your way out. Please feel free to drop your offering in there. If you are joining us on Zoom, please click on the link that Barry will provide. That will take you to our donate page where you can give via Vanco or PayPal. You are always welcome to mail a check in to the office. And for all of the ways that you give, which are just truly representative of the ways that God has given so generously to all of us. We thank you. I would, I would like to transition now to our prayers of the people. And uh, because we're experiencing such a different order of worship today with so many wonderful contributions, we're not going to take the mic around. But this will be participatory, and I especially want to ask our children to help, our children and our youth. Uh, as we speak these prayers of the people, I will say, God in your mercy, and I invite you all to say, hear our prayer. So let's try that. God in your mercy. Beautiful. Let us pray. Loving and beloved God, for all students and teachers working or crawling toward the finish line of the end of the school year, God, in your mercy, for Randy Jones' sister, B, who has been diagnosed with a Parkinson's-related condition, and for her family as they walk this journey alongside her, God, in your mercy, for our friends and family struggling with illness or grief, 
anxiety or depression, addiction or loneliness. God, in your mercy, for those with whom we cannot seem to be in right relationship, for the estranged, for any we ought to forgive or ask their forgiveness, God, in your mercy, for our nation, as we face a monumental election amidst division, attacks on democracy and distress, God, in your mercy, for those we have counted as enemies, authoritarian leaders, brutal tyrants, for those trafficking in hatred or perpetuating violence, God, in your mercy, for those the world counts last and least, hungry children in Gaza, fearing bombs in the night, migrants traversing deserts and oceans, those living on the streets or in prison, God, in your mercy. And for the joy we feel here today, led by our compassionate, creative children and youth, that they would carry these qualities with them everywhere they go. God, in your mercy. And hear us now as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray, saying, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite Wallace to come forward for our closing poem, The Voice by Shel Silverstein. There is a voice inside of you that whispers all day long. I feel that this is right for me. I know that this is wrong. No teacher, no preacher, parent, I mean, no teacher, preacher, parent, f friend, or wise man can decide w what is right for you. Just listen to the voice that speaks inside. So thank you so much. Um, I would like a few children and youth to kind of help me with a special project, if you could come join me. Um, at the end of um, the calendar year, we always just want to give a special thank you to all the uh, friends and family members of First Church that have helped make Faith Formation so wonderful. So I'm going to... Um, say the names of our amazing teachers and helpers. And if you are here, and if you can raise your hand, one of these beautiful children will bring you a flower, because you all bring delight and light to us. OK? So um, here, and some are not here, and we will, we will celebrate them later on. Um, Anna Kiss. Um, well, <laughs> Karen Pence. Latanya Bor Pernell, Christy Goodfellow Mills, around here, Kaylee McAvoy, Sherelle Daly, Barbara Gerlach, <laughs> Shay Ramberg, Kim Darling, Patrick Darling Lagama. Um, Tony Sadek, Ellie Haverman, Courtney McCaffrey, 
Louisa Jensen, Andy Raver, um, Meredith Baker, and Bushmiller. Um, Maddie Gee, Lauren McFerrin, um, Dennis Turner, Ann Sodek, Amanda Hendler Voss, oh, you get me up. Oh. Um, Susan Anderson, and Elise Viemes. So let us all. Yep. Oh, okay. okay. All right, let us all give all our teachers, and for those I'm sure I, I, may, I may have missed, let them all give them a, a heartfelt round of applause. So thank you very, very much. So wonderful, wonderful. Um, all right, now, 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 now we're going to get really moving. Um, so, um, children, this is our last song, and 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 we've got. Um, is that right? Did I miss something? I think they're right. All right, here we go. Sometimes I miss things. Um, so we got to really get our body moving here, and uh, and what's going to happen is, um, now there are four verses in this song, and you all are you all going to figure out the words. But I'm we're, the the children are going to lead us in the first two verses, which are to live and to work, and we invite you to join us and to pray and to sing. Is that all right? All right. So, um, so, friends, for the closing blessing, um, we thank God for your spirit that always reminds us that we are blessed and we are called to be a blessing to others. So we invite you to go out and spread the love of God. Amen. And wait one second. We've got one more thing to do. You ready, young man? You. All right.
Oh, yes. Oh, we have a very exciting congregational meeting uh, after the service. So we're, we go from one thing to another great thing here. So uh, it should be great. And we really, um, and that's very important. All right, you ready? Here we go. You on the, you're on this side. I feel more better over here. You're doing great. Loud and proud. Ha, ha, ha. 